ancient Egyptian grammar, very basic. Let's start at the beginning. Let's start with the nouns. Now, nouns can be either male or female. Male nouns do not have a suffix to indicate the gender. Female nouns end in a bread loaf, which makes a t sound. For example, you have the word brother, sen, and then you have the word sister, senet. Masculine nouns may sometimes end with what is called a determinative. That is a hieroglyph at the end, which shows that it is connected to men or male activities. So, for example, we have it, father. So we have the reed, bread, horned viper, and then at the end, we have the man. Sometimes you may find this symbol at the end of a word associated with men, and I think you can see why. Sometimes feminine nouns include the determinative of a woman, as indicated here, and this shows that this word is associated with a woman or with a woman's tasks. And an example of this is the word mut, as you can see here. We have a vulture, a bread loaf, and a woman at the end. And then we also see it again with sat for a daughter. These both contain the two female determinatives, the bread loaf, T, and the female sign at the end. Now, words that are neither feminine nor masculine actually take a feminine ending. An example of this can be seen in the ancient Egyptian word for Egypt, Kemet, and also to the ancient Egyptian word for Thebes, Waset. And here you will see that both words end in a T and the generic determinative, which indicates that this word is associated with town, village, or country. Thank you for joining us in this quick little video about Egyptian nouns and Egyptian grammar. In the next one, we will be talking about singular, plural, and dual nouns.